QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Credit Card Reconciliation Month Number 2. Let's do it with Intuit, QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, bank feed practice file. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. View dropdown, we've got the hide icon bar and the open windows list checked off. The open windows are open on the left. Reports dropdown, company financial, let's open up the P and the L. We will change the range from 01, 01, 22 to 12, 31, 22, and then customize it. Fonts to the numbers, change, and we'll bring it up to 14. Okay, yes, and okay. Then reports drop down, company and financial. This time, the balance sheet report. Customizing it, changing the range from 010122 to 123122, and then okay. And then, let, hold on a sec, customize. Let's also change the fonts and numbers. If we may, if I may, bring it up to 14. Okay, now it's okay. Now it's okay, it wasn't before, even though I hit okay. Then we'll hit the drop down on the banking. We're looking for the bank feeds, the bank feed center, which would only be there if we had the bank feeds turned on. We got two separate items we've been doing the bank feeds with, and we're focusing in on the credit cards, which typically we enter the bank feeds uh, from the, the transactions, meaning we don't typically do the full service accounting system in that we enter the transactions as we make them, as we actually buy stuff. We usually use the bank feeds or possibly just the credit card statement, if not using bank feeds, to record the transactions. And that works quite well oftentimes for small businesses because the, they're all electronic transfers, so we don't have that timing difference we have with the checks. We talked about last time that we could have an, an issue with that beginning balance problem if I go back to the balance sheet when we first start the credit cards. If we had a, a outstanding balance before we started entering the transactions, our beginning balance might not match out. Now we've fixed that problem, so we should be good going forward. I'm going to change the date to the end of the second statement, 09322. And so now we have in the credit card 93085. If I go back on over here to the bank statement, you can see it matches out here, which will could often be the case with the credit card because once again, we don't have the, the outstanding uh, transactions, checks and deposits. And because we constructed our statement, our books on or based on the bank feed so the data that's down here should match what we have in the system now that we have the beginning balance set up it's still advisable to do the bank reconciliation just to give a double check that everything has cleared that you haven't entered anything two times and that you haven't uh, not entered something that should be in place but usually it'll be a really easy process so what we'll what, if we want to do the bank reconciliation we should be able to just go over and say all right banking drop down we want to go to the reconciliation reconcile and we're looking credit card the credit card and it's as of 9 30 22 this time the starting balance 665 13 that should tie out this time we're good to go this time round. then the ending balance is going to be 9 30 85 9 3 0 0.85 and then we don't have any finance charges. Usually you're not gonna have any if you built your statements from the book, from the bank feeds, not because the, the business or the financial institution, your credit card company, isn't gonna charge you finance charges possibly, but because they would already be pulled in from the bank feeds. So you, you wouldn't have to add them in here so typically. So I'm gonna say continue on, and then I'm gonna hide everything after the cutoff date at the end 
of uh, 9 September. And so usually, now that we have the beginning balance checked off, because this is going to be exactly the data on the bank statement, we should be able to say mark all and this number should just go right down to zero. Let's just say mark all, boom. And now we've got the 665, the 27547, the uh, 54119, and the 93085, which should match our recap, 66513, 97547, 54119, and there's our ending balance. So it should be fairly straightforward uh, to, to do that. Note that if you have automated everything, the bank reconciliation might be a chance for you to go back in there and, and give a double check on you know a recap of your credit card. Because notice, once you've done a few months of data input, then you're going to start to automate things. And that means you're not going to be looking at them as closely when you just add them to the financial statements because you're just going to add them most likely. So the bank reconciliation could also be a nice time for you can go in here and actually say, OK, let me check these out in a little bit more detail and then verify any of these transactions that I think are unusual, even though they are probably same or memorized transactions, because that's what would pull through if you set up the rules. But it would be a good time to double check them if there are any changes to the dollar amounts and whatnot uh, with them. You can see, of course, that we're tying out the detail down here. So here's the detail that would tie out to the information on this side, which we would have to check off one by one if this didn't pan out correctly then of course we'd have to unmark everything and go okay now here's the 8545 the 119 the 3499 the 1197 the 21926 the 7121 and then say okay boom 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 and then we paid off the 27547 which should be on this side bam and then there we are so if that's at zero, then of course we can reconcile it. If it's not at zero, you probably want to find out what the difference is because you might need to make a change. Otherwise, QuickBooks will force a transaction and adjusting entry. If you've got the beginning balance in correctly, it should be quite easy to reconcile. If there's not, there's going to be something, some weird thing, some probably easy thing that you could you know, figure out by just ticking and tying off the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and reconcile it now. I'm going to reconcile. I'm not going to make a payment because there's an outstanding balance. I'm just because I'm not going to do this system to actually make the payment for the amount that's due at this point in time. So I'm going to cancel that. We then get our thing to, to pull up the actual bank reconciliation reports. Note that the process we did right here is reconcile lien. That's the reconcile lien process. That was not the actual bank reconciliation or credit card reconciliation. This is the credit card reconciliation but we shouldn't really need it because I'm going to customize this fonts, changing it. Let's go to 16 because we constructed our books from the, the bank records, from the bank statement, bank feeds, and therefore there's no difference. There's no outstanding items once we have, you know, double checked the, the reconciliation. We want to reconcile in order to make sure that we haven't double entered anything or that nothing was entered, uh, not entered that should have been. The top half of this will just be a recap of our bank statement, the 66513, the 54119, the 27547 gets to the 93085. That should match here, 66513, 27547, 54119. That gets us to the 93085. It's redundant. That's why we don't typically need it. What we really want is to see the difference between the cleared balance the amount on the, the bank statement or the credit card statement and the register balance. There is no difference because we constructed our financial statements directly from the bank. So therefore this balance is what is on the balance sheet here and also what is on the bank statement. That means the bank reconciliation doesn't really have any more valuable information because those two things match out. This is the data that has been entered after the transaction date, which again is typically irrelevant with regards to the bank reconciliation. If I look at the detail report, then we can go to the detailed one, much the same, but it's going to give us the detail, which is simply the detail up top, which is redundant because we already have it on the bank statement. The cleared balance uh, is here and that matches out and we don't have any other items. If we had outstanding items, meaning 
expenses that we entered into the system that have not yet cleared the bank, then we would want to make sure to have the bank reconciliation to know what those timing differences are, but we don't have any. So we're good to go. Just remember that if you do save the bank reconciliation, you want to save the detailed one because it will give you that detailed information. It's not just going to give you, oh, there's five items here. What are those five items? That's not very helpful. Although it gives me a nice summary recap of what's going on. It doesn't give me the detail that I really want and need. So also note that you might want to print the bank recs out if you want to save them because you can't really go back into them uh, after you've done another bank reconciliation without like deleting the other bank reconciliation and so on. These are not the same kind of reports as other reports, meaning all other reports in the drop down here are basically giving some more detail about the major two financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement, and are adding more information about one or multiple line items on them. They're also constructed as you do the data input. This report is rec reconciling what we did on our side to what the bank did, which is going to match because we constructed our side from the bank. And, uh, and therefore, if we went in here and deleted anything, QuickBooks wouldn't have anything they could do to fix the bank reconciliation because now our bank reconciliation would be off. It would be a problem. So that's why there's kind of a difference between this kind of report and internal control report, in essence, and other reports, which are financial statement reports and supporting reports. So if I close this out, just remember if I go back into the reports and I go into that banking and the previous reconciliation and go into the credit card, then it just opens up the last one I had, not, you know, so I can't really get access as easily to a prior one. I could unreconcile if I, if I needed to uh, the reconciliation. So if I entered one in error, it was wrong. I could kind of undo it and then go back and, and do the reconciliations again, which might be a useful thing. Hopefully you don't have to do that, but uh, you may have to from time to time. So if I went to the, to the banking and reconciled and go to the, to the uh, credit card reconciliation, you've got the undo last reconciliation right here. So sometimes you might need, you know, need to do that from time to time. Uh, if your balances don't tie out, right? If you forced something or someone else forced something to happen that wasn't right, then you want to fix it and do it the right way. You might have to undo. But that's the general strategy going forward on the bank recs. We will be constructing oftentimes with the credit card, the, the accounts from directly the bank feeds and therefore the bank recs should be quite easy. When we go up to the, to the bank recs for the checking account, if we constructed our books directly from the transactions on the bank and they were all electronic trans transactions rather than checks and whatnot, then it will often be similarly easy uh, to do the bank reconciliation, although still important to verify that we have entered everything and we haven't entered anything twice uh, like that. But if you have a more full service accounting system, which is quite more likely the case, with the checking account due to the fact that on the revenue side at least oftentimes small businesses still have to deviate from simply constructing their books from the deposits for example and on the payment side you might have actual physical checks from time to time or accounts payable that you're entering into the system which complicates the bank feeds makes it more difficult for us to construct our books directly from them and it could result in outstanding checks and deposits because we're entering into our system separately than what the bank is doing. That's the purpose of the bank reconciliation. And that gives us a better internal control if we do have that full service accounting system, which we could do with the credit cards as well. And a full service accounting system would, meaning every time we, we do something, make a purchase on a credit card, we should record it at that time if we were doing full service accounting system and then verify it when the credit card clears. But again, a lot of small businesses don't do that because it's, it's a, an electronic transfer and it works nice and easily <laughs> to wait for, till something clears the bank before entering it into the system. Okay, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll continue on and get to the bank reconciliations for the bank statements at some future point. We will get there.